Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. What's up guys? How are you guys doing? Welcome back to another episode of The Agronomist Office. It's your boy Tabs, The Agronomist. Uh, it's been a while guys. Um, man, <laughs> life is hectic. Uh, just know that there's a lot of things that are going to be changing. Maybe for the channel as well, but for me personally. So that's why I've been away guys, but let's get into this. Uh, today's episode so guys in today's episode we will be touching on compliance compliance issues these are things that farmers don't even think of and it catches them late in the production cycle or production season and sometimes it can even affect your sales whether you have sales or you have low return for your produce. So let's get into today's episode. I'll make sure to keep it brief and um, just giving you guys the highlights of what's important. Hey guys, just some basic housekeeping. I've got that book out called Nazorge, Basic Guide to Growing Crops for emerging farmers, for someone interested in starting farming but not knowing exactly what's needed. This book is for you. I've also got uh, spreadsheets out for people who already started uh, with their farming journey and maybe just need some documentation that will help them to do their financials a bit easier. So I've got a template there uh, that is editable and that can give you a cross profit margin of whatever you're planning to grow. At the moment, uh, we just have a few crops there, but definitely I will populate that. And of course, if you're back here again, thank you for you know sticking with me and uh, please like and subscribe um, and obviously share. It is June, halfway in the year. A lot of things are happening in the country, in the world. Um, but let's focus on what we're here to do, which is compliance issues. So we've gone through planning, we've gone through production, we've gone through protection, we've gone through um, post-harvest handling. So we've taken the journey from conception of the idea I want to farm all the way to a farm that I've taken it to the market. But there's a key stage that is very important for ensuring that you will get the most uh, from your produce. And that is compliance. So what do we mean by compliance? Compliance issues are things that you need as a business especially as a farming business in south africa so i'll start with the first thing which is company registration you need company registration um, documents especially when you're gonna be approaching the government or private funders anyone who you will need to communicate with formally might need you to produce a company registration certificate so for you to do this, you just need to register a company with the CIPC. Uh, that's the Companies and Intellectual Property Commission. I think now it's Biz Portal. I'm not sure. Between CIPC and Biz Portal. But you register your company there. Uh, if you're going to register with a name, it should be 170 Rand. If without a name, it should be less than that. Um, so this is an easy first step for anyone to do. It also, for the farmer, it makes whatever you're doing more serious. It goes from being a hobby to becoming more serious when you do this. And of course, there's annual returns that you need to submit in order to keep that, co that company alive. I think it's like a hundred rand a year just to keep it alive. Remember that annual return has got nothing to do with SARS uh, and tax. So, and I'm not even gonna get into tax, um, yeah. But remember guys, it's tax season, uh, starting July, so <laughs> do your tax. Okay, so you do that and then you've got a company registration documents, you've got your directors and you know, all the important people of the company. Um, in the book that I wrote, I, I wrote it in, in the steps that I'm giving it to you for a reason. So from company registration, I say business plan. I didn't say business plan, then company registration, because I found that uh, a lot of farmers, they tend of, they don't like paperwork, I'll just be honest. They don't like paperwork and something as abstract as a business plan, you might as well be 
telling them about art. So they don't really like that. But when you start the step of registering a company, it informs that the company must have a business plan. So the pressure is there for the grower to go from registration to what exactly are we doing, getting the nitty gritties done. Because we find that a lot of guys have the company, but there's no company registration documents. It's not a legitimate uh, business, a legitimate enterprise. So when you go to getting a business plan, I always say do it yourself. Do it yourself because there are things in that business plan, especially in the beginning, mission, vision, those type of things that require one to have an understanding of why am I doing this? What good thing am, am I trying to put into the world um, via this vehicle, which is this business? So if you leave that to someone else and you hire someone to do it, you won't really communicate what you want other people to understand about your company via the business plan. Remember the business plan, it serves maybe two or three purposes, but I'll just stick on two. It serves as an internal guiding tool for you, the business. So whenever you put in other directors, they get the business plan and they also see, okay, this is where we're going as a business. Like a benchmark or like, like a, a snapshot of what your business is for people on the outside, whether it's potential funders, um, whether it's potential stakeholders, uh, potential partners, that type of thing. And usually they want a company profile. Now a company profile will be like a summarized version of the business plan. So you can't cheat the business plan guys. Don't cheat the business plan. Be thorough in it, take your time in it. Do it properly. Um, yeah, so that's the business plan. Next is record keeping. Record keeping, oh. I haven't seen I haven't seen it being done as well as I would like to see it being done by the farmers um, and it's really I believe the one key thing that's holding us back as let's say small scale farmers is the poor record keeping that we have people are keeping records in their heads people don't think other records are important um, and that creates opportunity for wastage you end up eating away at your margins, your profits, because you haven't been keeping a tight uh, watch on things. It's almost like you have a garden, you're watering, but you don't know how much water you're using. You don't care to check if the tap is leaking. You don't know how much fertilizer you're putting into your garden. If there's organic matter, you don't care where it comes from, how it's put in, who's putting it in. And at the, at the end of the day, those type of decisions or poor decisions end up eating away at your profits or whatever money you should be making back could even be a loss so on a large scale away from gardening to small scale uh, farming it becomes that the differences become higher become larger the gap between us making a profit and us breaking even so it's very important that um, you do record keeping so when we talk about record keeping, I mean, what, what are we talking about record keeping? I won't mention all of them because there's a lot, but some of the broad points will be record keeping what's happening on a daily basis on the farm. If you know that on a daily basis workers are there, then you should be able to document what are the workers doing, who's doing which specific tasks. Are they qualified to do these tasks? those type of considerations we need to look at assets so what as our assets are they being well maintained if we've got tractors on there when was the last time that tractor was serviced is the service history there who's driving that tractor on a daily basis is the person qualified are they doing checks that need to be done on the tractor are they documenting the checks that they're doing uh, this can bite you in the back if you have a tractor driver who's not doing checks they don't apply lubrication and oil on uh, the different parts the nipples that should get these type of lubricants after a while it gets dry and then when a problem happens it becomes worse and it could have been avoided just by lubricating nipples for example so very important we we, we do record keeping other forms of record could be farm use records for example, if we are applying, like I said earlier on, fertilizer, 
we need to know how much of which type of fertilizer are we using. Was it the first batch that came in that we're using or are we just using the recent batch? I mean, usually with inventory first in, first out. So when you don't have a system, you might be using products that are not within the expiry date, especially with chemicals, agrochemicals. So it's very important that we keep record and we make sure that the farm is producing as effectively as it can. Now, there's one part that's not a lot of uh, farmers, especially small farmers, tend to pay too much attention to because it's to do with the municipality. But there is this thing called zoning. Uh, basically, when it comes to land use of any municipality, the municipality basically maps out which areas are suitable for what. So there'll be residential areas will be mapped out, industrial areas will be mapped out, recreational areas, like that, like that. So if you're gonna be now starting a small scale farming business, maybe with the idea that you want this thing to grow, also have in mind the land use. Am I in the right place to do this for the next 10, 20, 30 years? Or will someone come and shut me down as soon as I start putting in infrastructure? So you you need to, as a grower, you need to make sure that wherever you're producing, you are following the municipal bylaws. And that's the type of information you can get from your local municipality. Um, not sure exactly which section, but uh, your local municipality should be able to give you a guideline as to, yes, you can do this here or no, you can't do this here. So now, if you're doing crops, another very important consideration is uh, GAP, JP, Good Agricultural Practices, or Good Agronomic Practices, depending where you're getting the acronym from. These are just practices that every farmer in the world should be doing to ensure that their production is as uniform as possible, free of contamination, for the end user, the customer, and is very traceable with documentation. So it, it's a globalized system. There's something called Global Gap, which is like an international accreditation. It helps with getting into markets like um, your fresh produce markets, maybe the higher end uh, fresh produce markets, because you're basically saying as a farmer, if you have the certification that look, I'm following the right protocols when it comes to how I'm producing my crop. If you don't have this, it basically says to whatever market you're supplying, hey man, I do this however I like. So that's why someone who has a global gap certificate is more likely to have their produce taken on a large scale consistently than someone who doesn't. So, I mean, with, I think there's also a local one called SA Gap that the Department of Agriculture um, gives to growers and um, the only issue I think with it is the amount of places that recognize it. So as a grower you want to, if your ambition for example is to go to a certain fresh produce uh, supplier and you see that no man their prices are nice and high and the produce is good I can get in there then you need to approach them to find out what exactly do you need from some from someone who's supplying. Uh, do you need SA gap, do you need global gap, or don't you need anything? So yeah, th those type of things are, are, should be covered in the market research that you do. Some of the important considerations in uh, gap would be water, like where is your water source coming from, is it tested, uh, that type of thing. Your in farming environment, have you sealed it off nicely, is your produce protected? Uh, what is the layout like? Hopefully there's no toilet or ablution facilities on higher ground than your produce because that would mean that effluent is running down or if you have storage, it shouldn't be on a higher ground because then uh, if there's a leak, it would run down into your field. So it's about those type of considerations. We're looking at traceability. Are you doing those record keeping or that record keeping that we were talking about earlier on? How robust is it? If, if there's a high presence of a chemical found in a crop, are we able to follow your documentation to find exactly who sprayed that particular crop? If there's a batch, a, a, a bad batch that comes from 
an agrochemical company whereby you spray the fungicide and it actually kills all your crops? Are you able to have in good enough record keeping to go back to the company and say, hey, you guys owe me X amount of rands that I was supposed to get from this hectare because your product didn't work. Do you have the, you know, you get what I'm saying? So, and remember, I did mention that the label on agrochemical um, products is your contract between the company that supplies it and yourself. So if you don't read it and you don't follow step-by-step -step instructions that are there, then you can't come back and cry foul if something bad happens. So that's where Global Gap comes in. And um, guys, it's very important. It's very important. Make sure you either have SA Gap or Local Gap and Global Gap or Global Gap. Just to wrap up, guys, there is no right time to start any business. And at the same point, there is no right time to start farming. You just have to start as soon as you can. And remember, like we said in planning, very important that you take the planning seriously. You need to do the market research properly. Don't jump any process. Do it as properly as you want. If you want to do the business plan as well in the planning um, stage, that's also fine. Just make sure you do a thorough job of it. Don't um, shortcut the process. And yeah, guys, uh, connect with farmers, connect with experts, connect with government officials and do whatever you need to do to get production done. And with that, we're done with this series of growing your crops. The next series, who knows what we'll talk about. But for now, let's do our best to feed the nation, guys. Bye.